Good evening. Happy All Hallows Eve and Happy All Saints Day. That's today is we begin a, a new series for the month of November. We can see by our title here, You're Dead. So now what? That November traditionally is the month in our Catholic Church to reflect upon the end times, the end of the world, but also the end of our lives. That there, despite all of the advances of modern medicine, the mortality rate in our country and in our world is still 100%. Everyone dies, and yet, very often, we don't like to talk about death or even to think about it. That as a church, death is one thing that we have going for us. Despite the distractions of entertainment and our affluent culture, we all must face our death and the death of the people we love the most. Death forces us to acknowledge that we're finite beings in the sense that our bodies die, but our spirits live on. In this series, we'll look at our Catholic faith and teaching on what happens after you die. We'll show how we long for something beyond this world and how our actions in this life impact what happens to us in the next. That here we celebrate on this feast of all saints, we celebrate our freedom as Christians from death and dying. And why shouldn't we celebrate, right? Through Jesus, we've conquered death. So we've decided to do a whole series dedicated to death. Everyone who lives dies. Even Jesus died. There's more to it, but in fact, he died. You cannot ever avoid death. So it behooves us to believe in life after death. But many Catholics don't go there. They would rather deny death and just live for the moment. The person who struggles with this is usually a man, a young man, sometimes in his 30s, who thinks that he's invincible and wants to live in the moment kind of fearing death because he struggles with the concept of an afterlife. That here, we like to call this young man in his 30s, Jupiter Joe. That Jupiter Joe, that is Catholic, very often he doesn't come to church, but he's waiting for us to invite him. And so we're going to see Jupiter Joe kind of as a special guest throughout our series here, that Joe doesn't want to talk about death. But what he thinks about it, he thinks about it as a little confusing and even unsettling. For Joe, even though he knows death is inevitable, he knows intellectually that it will one day happen. He can't bring himself to consider his own mortality scares him and shocks him. When he allows himself to think about it, he looks at death and says that it can't be the end. There has to be something more. Well, that feeling should be telling him something. Think about it. There's resolutions for all of the longings we have in our life. We hunger and there's food. We thirst, and there's water. We long for companionship and find friends. We desire rest, and there's sleep. So it would seem that the longing for eternity, a desire for more existence after we die, is a likely reality. What happens I die is a practical question because 
the most certain part of life is death. And the follow-up question, does what I know now here on this earth have any impact on what happens to me after I die? In a nutshell, yes, it does. So wise people live their lives taking death into account. So what happens after I die? Well, if you grew up Catholic, you learned that after death, you're headed to one of three destinations, heaven, purgatory, or hell. So let's begin with our ultimate goal, heaven. The Beatitudes tell us what we should be doing to join the saints in heaven. These are attributes that we should all aspire to, and they're attributes that all the saints have, living and dead. It's Christ's sacrifice that leads us to heaven. It's his sacrifice that earns us heaven. The first reading here that we heard tonight is perfect. They cried out in a loud voice, Salvation comes from our God, who is seated on the throne, and from the Lamb, the Lamb being Jesus. Heaven is what we're designed for, an eternity of joy with God. It's pretty impressive stuff. There are plenty of references in Scripture about heaven. The tricky one is purgatory. That's where most Catholics and other Christians get lost. So how do we come to this teaching that many of us will experience a period of purification before we enter heaven? We get there from Scripture. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and in 1 Peter chapter 1, they both speak of a purification a cleansing fire. This isn't hell, but a period of purification, which if we know anything is very likely brought on by our own free will, our own decision to purify ourselves before we join our Creator in heaven. Also, there were plenty of references in scriptures to prayers for the dead. We pray for them. Why pray for them if they're already in heaven? There must be something else. There must be a place where every sin can be forgiven, even if it's just for us to forgive ourselves in this age and for some in the age to come. It's also mentioned in Matthew chapter 12. So these two concepts of purification and prayer for the dead. Both lead us to acknowledge that there is a place called purgatory, which may be a self-imposed period of purification before we allow ourselves, and yes, maybe before we ourselves are allowed to join the heavenly host. These are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. And we call that a cliffhanger, because it's there that we'll pick up again next week. But just remember, rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. Death is a door to more. Heaven is our home. It's where God wants us to be, And Jesus did the unthinkable to get us there. He died on the cross.